Hello, everyone. Today, I'm very excited to talk about one of my favorite genres, fighting games. And with the release of Street Fighter 6 and Tekken 8 fast approaching, interest in the genre is peaking once again. The old slumbering players are waking from their sleep and saying, what? Tekken 8? Didn't Tekken 7 just come out last year? This seems a little bit soon to me. And we're getting the character reveal trailers and we're getting the reactions to the character reveal trailers. And then we're getting the analysis of the reactions to the character reveal trailers. And I will admit, six or so years ago, when Street Fighter V was coming out and Tekken 7 was finally coming to console, I was right there along with everyone else. I was so hyped. I was so excited. I was going through those trailers frame by frame. Oh my God. Ryu has a parry. This is going to be amazing. And yes, I call him Ryu. You can't stop me. This is going to be awesome. This is going to be like Third Strike mixed with Street Fighter 4. It's going to be like the best of both. And it's going to just be the best Street Fighter ever. And then Tekken 7, you saw that they had Rage Arts. It's like, oh my God, there's supers in Tekken now. And then there's Akuma. I actually was an Akuma player in Street Fighter. So I was extra excited. I was like, yeah. So I can beat down on people with Devil Jin, and then when they complain, I'll switch over to Akuma and beat them with Akuma. This is just the best news ever. And at the time, if you engage your memory banks and remember what the vibe was at this point, but six years ago with Tekken 7 and Street Fighter 5, the hype levels were at maximum. This was going to be the fighting game revolution, where they go from being low-tier competitive games to top-tier esports bringing in the cash people were now going to be pro players we're going to have pro teams everyone's going to make a living just playing fighting games this is like sports 2.0 forget basketball forget football forget dumb sports people play all about the fighting games baby this is going to be the revolution this is going to be the future evo was just getting bigger and better year by year everything was going so well no problems at all this was going to be where everyone makes their career and it did fighting games quite live up to all that hype they kind of did in some ways like tekken definitely came back in a strong way street fighter that story is not <laughs> did not turn out so great and so here we are now around six years later and we are on the precipice of the release of tekken 8 and street fighter 6 and just like in the past the hype levels are all good to go this is going to be the point where everyone is the most happy and excited about these games. And why is that? That's because the games are not actually out yet. So there's still that little bit of wiggle room for the fantasy and for the dream. But I'm making today's video not because I want to be a downer or because I want to rain on anyone's parade. I'm going to buy and play Tekken 8 just like everyone else, but rather to share an experience that I've been through, and I think an experience that a lot of fighting game players have been through that no one really talks about, that I like to call the tragedy of fighting game. I call it the tragedy of fighting games because over the years I have racked my brain for solutions. I've heard a lot of great and experienced players propose ideas to solve the problem, and yet nothing has changed. And in fact, the problem may be accelerating and you're probably wondering, okay, but what am I alluding to? What am I talking about? I am talking about the tragic nature of the fighting game in that it hits hard, it makes a big impact, and then it dies a young, premature death. Fighting games are like the rock stars of video games where they make a big shift when they are around, but they are not going to be around for long. And it feels like nothing you do can prevent that from happening. And I am sure as I'm saying these words, your hands are flying to the keyboard with all these counter examples of like, oh, but what about this fighting game? What about that fighting game? This one's still around, that one's still around. No, 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 that, that's not how it is. Well, we're gonna get to all that. But what I am talking about right now is that no matter how good your fighting game is, no matter how perfect your fighting game may be, it cannot and will not be the relevant game moving into the future. Even if you make the best fighting game of all time, and there's a lot of fighting games you could put into this category, that game 
cannot last into the future. It cannot become like chess or like tennis or like soccer. It will be replaced. It must be replaced. And I'm going to break down why exactly that is. And so let's begin by talking about the difference between fighting games and single player games. And I know that other multiplayer games could probably be fit into this same discussion, but I don't care about other multiplayer video games. I care about fighting games. And so when you compare fighting games to something like single player games, even competitive single player games like speedrunning and shmups, there is a fundamental difference about how they hold up over time. Because if I take something like Devil May Cry 3, and I buy Devil May Cry 3 on my PlayStation 2, and I stick that Devil May Cry 3 disc inside my PlayStation 2, I am getting the full Devil May Cry 3 experience, just like everyone else experienced it, in terms of gameplay, in terms of what the game has to offer. And in fact, I might even get an enhanced experience over people in the past, because let's say I want to speedrun Devil May Cry 3, or I want to play it in some sort of semi-competitive fashion. Well, now I have all these records of people who have competed in the game in the past, and I can compete with them as if we were playing at the same time. I can compete with people over time. Speedrunners are able to do this. Speedrunners can compete with some speedrunner 10 years ago. And when you break that speedrunner's record from 10 years ago, you are objectively better at the game than the guy 10 years ago. That is proven, that is metric, that is a fact. In fighting games, this is not the case. So I buy Tekken 3, a very good fighting game, and I buy it for my PlayStation. And I come home and I stick Tekken 3 inside my PlayStation and I can get a slice of what that game has to offer. I can play the single player content and I can even play the local competitive content of that game. So I can get my friend to come over and play him in Tekken 3. I can play Tekken 3 arcade mode. I can play Tekken force mode. I can play Tekken in practice mode and just practice my wave dashing and back dashes and electrics. I can do all that. But what I cannot do is that I cannot participate in the competitive scene of Tekken 3 because that competitive scene is gone. It has disappeared and its peak shall never return. The context of Tekken 3 will never ever be the same. And even if I start a campaign and I get a bunch of people to play Tekken 3, I spread the word on social media, everyone gets it on Fightcade, we're playing Tekken 3 with rollback netcode, we're convincing it to get added into tournaments. We're all showing up. There's hundreds of Tekken 3 players. We're all just die hard. You know, we're bringing the game back with yeah. the developers. It's all about Tekken 3. Even if that all happened, Tekken 3 will never live up to its full potential. It will never reach its peak because it's like swimming up a waterfall. You can get off the ground a little bit. You can maybe even get up that waterfall a tiny amount. But Tekken 3, because of the nature of the fighting game, will fall back down. That little revival, that little burst of interest, you can get it up the stream a bit, but ultimately it will come crashing right back down. And I've seen this time and time again. And this is probably what a lot of you are already commenting on. You're talking about, well, what about Super Turbo? Well, what about Third Strike? Well, what about Super Smash Brothers Melee? These games have beaten the odds, right? Have they? Have they really though? These are games that are still relevant and played in that you can find matches for them on Fightcade or on Slippy, or you can go to local tournaments. So these games have done it. These games have overcome the tragedy of the fighting game. Sadly, I don't think so. These games are essentially in the retirement home. They're not dead yet, but they're not exactly young and kicking either. They're just sort of hanging around, not really growing, not really shrinking, but you respect them and you learn from them. They are your elders, but they are not the rock stars. They are not setting the world on fire. They are great examples of great games, games that have stood out among their peers, but sadly, all these games 
will turn to dust. They will not be multi-generational. They will go out with our generation. And I think with a lot of millennials view of time, that's like good enough. It's like, well, if they make it to the end of our lifespan, which I doubt they'll make it that far, but let's say Super Turbo makes it all the way into the literal retirement home where like 80 year olds are playing Super Turbo against each other. Even if it makes it that far, it's like model trains. It will not be passed on to the next generation in a true competitive fashion. Street Fighter as a franchise may continue on to the next generation, but the individual games themselves are like sacrificial pawns because they cannot maintain a long lasting, true competitive environment. Their children eat them alive. They are cannibalized by their own offspring. And I find that to be very interesting. And I find that to be very tragic because if you look at the evolution of all these series, if you look at Street Fighter, Tekken, Virtua Fighter, Guilty Gear, Super Smash Brothers, how many of you can confidently say that the best game in each series is the latest game? So the best game of Tekken is Tekken 7. The best game of Street Fighter is Street Fighter 5. That's kind of laughable to even say. The best game of Smash Brothers is Smash Ultimate. And the best Guilty Gear is Guilty Gear Strive. And as someone who's been playing a lot of Guilty Gear XX lately, I don't think so. But what's fascinating about this and why I say it's tragic, it's like the edible complex. I don't know how many of you know about the edible complex, but what makes the story interesting isn't just that he has with his mother, it's that he's actually trying everything he can not to have with his mother. That's what makes it interesting tragedy. He is doing everything he can to prevent this from happening, but by trying to prevent it, he causes it. And with the tragedy of fighting games, it is actually just like this. No matter what fighting games do, they cannot escape this fate. It is sealed in their birth. A fighting game cannot just stand and stand the test of time. Because no matter what you do, you will ultimately change and cannibalize the game. No matter what approach you take, and we'll talk about the different approaches. So the first approach is to just go Capcom style and just make each game in this series individually different from one another somewhat. So Street Fighter 2 is pretty dang distinctive from Street Fighter Alpha, which is distinctive from Street Fighter 3, which is distinctive from Street Fighter 4. 4 and 5 have a lot in common, and 5 and 6, I assume, are going to have a lot in common as well. But some of those in the series, especially Third Strike, definitely stand out as different games in the series. And so that is why Super Turbo and Third Strike have lived on in this sort of retirement home fashion because they are distinctive and unique. However, what drives a fighting game audience is not quality nor design. That would be nice, but that is not how it works. It would be fascinating if Guilty Gear Strive came out and the entire player base said, nope, we're not doing it. No one is playing Guilty Gear Strive. That's not good enough. We want Accent Core. So we're just gonna keep playing Accent Core. That does not happen because what determines if a fighting game is played competitively is not the competitive player base. It is actually the casual player base. If 20,000 casual players play Guilty Gear Strive, the competitive scene needs to exist on top of the casual scene. And so even if all the players get together, they form a little union and they say, you know what, no strive. We're all playing Accent Core forever. What will happen is that the new casual scene will come in, they'll play strive, they're in greater number, and they will generate their own competitive scene that will replace the Guilty Gear XX scene. Because when it comes to fighting games, they need concurrent players. Players are like a resource. It isn't like Devil May Cry, where you can play Devil May Cry 5 or you could play Devil May Cry 3. It doesn't matter, no. You need to play what other people are playing because if other people aren't playing it, you can't play it. And the more people that play it, the more valid the competition is, and the more valid competition is, the closer you get to the actual intended design of the game. And the intended design of the game is to be played competitively. So ironically, no matter what the competitive players do, their actions are completely dictated 
by the casual fan base. Casual fan base decides what is played. And you may be saying to yourself, whoa, 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 what about Melee? Melee is the great counter example of this. Melee broke this trend. Melee was the example of the competitive player base refusing to play the new game and bringing it back. But Melee has a lot of stuff going on that isn't exactly just the players refusing to play the new game. There was a lot more involved with Melee sticking around and being relevant. To maintain the pace of the video, I will write a detailed analysis of what elements contributed to Melee's longevity. But I will say that as much as I like Melee as a competitive game, it is not immortal and a lot of the factors that have kept the competitive scene alive are starting to fade. Melee won't disappear overnight, but like all other games, it will slowly decline in popularity. But returning to the main point, so even if the developer makes distinctive games in their series, and even does a pretty good job of trying to support all the games, at least like Capcom is making Third Strike as available as possible, they're not really trying to stop Third Strike from being played competitively or anything like that, and Third Strike's got a lot of support over the years with all these different ports and everything. Even still, Third Strike cannot scratch the surface of the most recent game's activity. And the reason for that, as I said before, is because the most current game has the concurrent player base. I've experienced this myself over and over again when I go to my local scene. I'll show up and say, I wanna play Third Strike and I will only play Third Strike and no one there plays Third Strike. <laughs> and the people who kind of play Third Strike, let's say they like, you know, dabble in it a bit. You know, they play Street Fighter V and so they'll play a little bit of Third Strike with me to humor me, but to what end? Because fighting games are a social genre. That is what makes them special. That is what makes them exciting, is because you want to participate in what is happening. And so being a hipster in fighting games can only go so far. You get pushed into the new game, even though in your head, and I'm sure a lot of people will experience this with Street Fighter 6 coming up, even though 5 probably wasn't that great, but old school Street Fighter players, or maybe old school Tekken players with 8 coming up, where in my head I'll say, well, I actually like Tekken 3 better, or I like Tekken 5 better, or I like Tekken 6 better, Tekken Tag 2 maybe even better. I still have to play Tekken 8. I must play Tekken 8 if I want to actually play Tekken in a competitive environment. So I'm totally at the mercy of whatever Tekken 8 has to do with me. So that brings us to the second example of gameplay over time. So the first example was Capcom making distinctive games each time in the series. Now we come to Tekken and a lot of 3D games which have more iterative design. So from game to game, they are not that different from one another game to game. And so at first it feels like, ah, this is it. This is the way you preserve a game, is by just iterating it from release to release, changing a little bit here and there, but retaining the core of what makes that gameplay design unique. And this sounds great on paper, and actually for a long time, I thought, okay, this is the method that works. And if you follow along with games release to release, it kind of feels like it's working. Like you play Tekken 3, the Tekken tag, you got the second character there, but it doesn't feel all that different. It feels like a lot of it's still kind of lining up to Tekken 3. All right, all right, we're kind of preserving the game. We go from Tekken tag to Tekken 4. That's actually a big shift because they removed the backdash cancel but then they put it back in Tekken 5. So, okay, you know, that Tekken 4 was a little misstep, but we're getting back on track with Tekken 5. And then we go from Tekken 5 to Tekken 6. Oh, you know, that's not too different. They've added in some different mechanics here and there, but it feels like, you know, it's still kind of the same game. Tekken 6 to Tekken Tag 2. Okay, now you've got a lot of interesting tag mechanics and you've got two characters going on. It's a lot more complicated, but you know, it's still retaining what is Tekken. And then you play Tekken 7, and they've changed the wake up game to be simpler and they've nerfed a sidestep, they've nerfed backdash, they've added in rage arts and 2D characters with fireballs, but you know, it's still retaining mostly the core of the game. That's how it feels when you go from game to game. But if you play Tekken 7 and then fire up Tekken 3, it is massive how different the games feel. Like, these are two different 
series at this point. Tekken 3 and Tekken 7, massive difference. And what's funny is that even if we end up in a situation where Capcom says Street Fighter 6 is the last Street Fighter game and Namco says Tekken 8 is the last Tekken game, we are never making another Tekken game. This is it. This is the formula. This is what works. This is Tekken from now on. Even if that happens, what we will see, and you can see this with Tekken 7, is actually because of updates and patches and added characters and games as service, that game will ultimately shift into an entirely new game. If you play Tekken 7 Season 1, and then you play Tekken 7, whatever season it ended on, 4 or 5, wherever that ended, it's quite a different game. I play Devil Jin, and it's like every three months I'm playing a different character. Electrics track, and now electrics don't track. You know, it's just like they don't know what to do with the character. They're constantly changing him and rebalancing him. You could argue with games as service and with patching, what the developers are doing is they have this vision of what Tekken is, and they are just bringing it in piece by piece. And then ultimately, when all the pieces come together, we will get the definitive final version of the game. Except we all know that is complete. <laughs> we all know that is not going to happen because that is not the economy of fighting games. That makes absolutely no sense. It would be bold. It would be interesting if a developer made one final definitive version of their game and said, that is it complete this is the most perfect amazing game we did it all we've done it exactly right and we have completed the game and you may be saying to yourself oh well its developers just did that if they had the artistic integrity to just do that all the problems would be solved tekken would just move forward into the future as this ever-present game like basketball and we can generationally play these games in their perfected form and doesn't that sound nice? Except there's this nagging example of a game very much like that. And that game is called Virtua Fighter 5 Final Showdown. Virtua Fighter 5, in my opinion, has one of the best cases of being a game that was essentially perfected by the developer and then left the F alone. Sega did it, they're like, this is it and they left the game alone. And where is Virtua Fighter and Final Showdown now? You can't play the game. You cannot play, even if you want to play, you cannot play the game. No one plays Virtua Fighter 5 Final Showdown. It is practically dead. And I know this because I want to play Virtua Fighter 5 Final Showdown, and you've gotta like hunt people down. And even if you hunt people down, there just is not enough interest in the game. No one cares. There is no way to get people to play Virtua Fighter 5 Final Showdown. Even if you sit them in a lecture hall and you tell them Virtua Fighter 5 Final Showdown is the greatest fighting game ever made and you give a three hour presentation of all the things it does right and why it deserves to be played, people will not play it. Why? That brings us to what I said before. It is because the competitive scene does not dictate what is played. The casual scene dictates what is played. And so if you are a Virtua Fighter player, your only hope for Virtua Fighter becoming more relevant is if Virtua Fighter 6 is made. And then 6 likely changes a lot about the game in order to appeal to the casual audience. That is your best chance to play Virtua Fighter again is to play it in this toned down, more casual friendly form. And that is tragic in my opinion. Recently, Eris was making a video about Street Fighter 6 and he said in that video that what makes Street Fighter 6 special is that no matter how it <laughs> is, it has an insurance policy. People will continue to play Street Fighter no matter how bad things get and Street Fighter 5 proved that. And that is an interesting insight and what Eris is describing is the critical mass of player. There is a core group of people that grew up with Street Fighter, that played Street Fighter in the arcades, 
that are married to this franchise and they will stick to this franchise through thick and thin to the bitter end. And that is true until it is not true. There comes a point where these people will no longer be around, even if it takes the Grim Reaper to take out these Street Fighter fans. Eventually, those Street Fighter fans will disappear. And the new generation of players coming up, they are not signing on to Street Fighter. That is some old man stuff. They will be on a new series, maybe Guilty Gear, maybe a different series. And even if they preserve Street Fighter, even if Capcom update and change the series to match with the shifting times, that game will be massively different from good old Super Turbo. And in fact, maybe the only similarity between that game and Super Turbo is the name Street Fighter in the title. That might be the only connecting thread. But before I end the video, I want to bring everything I'm saying together in a coherent message so people know exactly what I'm saying. I think there could be a lot of misinterpretation otherwise. I am not saying that you should give up on fighting games. I am not saying that you shouldn't play old fighting games. That's pretty much all I do is play old fighting games. I try to find people to play in Dead or Alive 5. I try to find people to play in Guilty Gear Accent 4. Every now and then I'll fire up some Third Strike and it is cool that you can still access these games and play these games. But all that being said, I cannot pretend that these games are living up to what could be their full potential. I would love it if every year at EVO, I could count on watching some high level Dead or Alive 4 match. That's not going to happen. And an interesting idea that Boghog brought up when I talked to him about the topic is, what about in the future if they used machine learning to have AI basically simulate human opponents so that even though you can't get other people to play Dead or Alive 4 in like a tournament, you could like run an AI tournament and compete in an AI tournament against the AI and, you know, have a pretty similar experience to facing human opponents. And what's funny is that some games have actually done this pretty well already. Like Virtua Fighter 4 has something quite a bit like this called quest mode, and it is really cool and the AI in that game is very sophisticated and you do play in these simulated tournaments. It is amazing single player content and it is a bit of single player content that keeps Virtua Fighter 4 alive in my PlayStation 2 and I come back and I play Virtua Fighter 4 a lot because of that. But even in that situation, like I said, the core of fighting games is the social element, the social interaction. There is nothing more fun and exciting than playing a fighting game that is actively competed in in tournament and you're watching matches and then you're doing your own matches and you're talking to your friends and you're going over their matches with them and you're like oh god damn it you shouldn't have done this you should have sidestepped there or that matchup is awful you know you could have counter picked this and then you sit down in the car and on the drive home you just theory craft what matchups would work and how you think about the characters and it's just this endless source of bonding among players. I mean, that is what makes the genre so awesome and special. And that is what keeps players coming back so that even if I feel in my heart that Tekken 7 is a step down from Tekken Tag 2 or Tekken 6 or Tekken 5, I still come and play Tekken 7 or I still come play whatever game is currently being played because I want to have that human interaction and community, which is hard to get in video games these days. So unfortunately, even with incredibly well simulated AI tournaments, that does not solve the issue. And I honestly don't think it can be. That is why it is the tragedy of fighting games. So my concluding message is one, if you like a game that is being competed in actively, appreciate that. Do not take that for granted. If you love Tekken 7 and you think it is like one of the best fighting games ever, do not sit around and say, well, you know, I'll just wait till Tekken 8 comes out and then I'll just play Tekken 8. These last few months, if you are a Tekken 7 fan, are probably some of the last months you will ever play Tekken 7 in a competitive peak type environment. So do it, <laughs> play it now. If you love Tekken 7, play it right now. I don't really imagine too many people love Street Fighter 5, but if you love Street Fighter 5, play it now before Street Fighter 6 comes out. 
because you have no guarantee that the next game in the series will be an improvement and it might be a massive drop in quality. I have a big regret with this when it comes to Dead or Alive 5 because I loved Dead or Alive 5 and it was around when I was actively playing it, but I thought, you know, Dead or Alive 5, it's kind of hard to get matches, kind of a pain in the butt. I'll just wait till Dead or Alive 6 comes out with its rollback netcode and all of its improvements and I'll just play Dead or Alive 6. Well, 6 comes out and Dead or Alive 6 isn't that great. It's not awful, but it is definitely a step down from Dead or Alive 5. And now I'm sitting there kicking myself like, well, so I waited three years for nothing. I should have just played Dead or Alive 5 those three years. So that would be my first conclusion is if you like a game that is currently being played, play it and play it now. My second conclusion is that if you're a fan of these older games that are in the retirement home, so to say, like Third Strike, Super Turbo, King of Fighters 2002, or Guilty Gear XX. And I have been playing a lot of Guilty Gear XX lately. I'm actually really into it right now. Do not compare these games to the current game being played in terms of activity and player base, because it will not happen. No matter what you do, those Strive players will not come over and all start playing Guilty Gear XX. You have to sort of make your own fun with these older retirement home fighting games to some degree. You're gonna have to get a little creative with it in terms of playing a lot of single player stuff, playing a lot in practice mode, timing when you play online with the few other people that are still around, and being prepared to get absolutely bodied because the people who are still around are probably the old salty pros who didn't want to play the new game. And so you're being thrown into the meat grinder to begin with. And so with these games, it's going to be a lonelier experience where you've got to milk out of them what you can. And so with Dead or Alive 4, I've been playing a bunch of high difficulty survivor mode matches and sort of making up my own challenges within the game. Like, oh, let's try to beat arcade mode without dying and sort of like a speedrunner or challenger because sadly that is the fate of these games. And I know a lot of people are going to mention Discord and like, oh, we'll just join the Dead or Alive Discord or just join the Guilty Gear XX Discord. And for me, I'm not a huge fan of that because I hate Discord matches and I hate like matchmaking on Discord. You gotta chat with people. There's like this big social element, it takes forever. Honestly, the better solution is what Melee did where they made an actual matchmaking client I think that is way better. And I don't want to sit in a thousand discords and beg people to play against me. I just want to match make with people, even if it is the same four dudes over and over. I just like that a lot better than doing all these crappy lobbies. In Dead or Alive, I just go into practice mode, fight against the AI, and then turn on the throwdown option so that whenever a match comes along, I'll just go out of practice mode and auto load into the match. That's actually a really good feature. More fighting games should have that feature. But anyway, these are my thoughts on why I find fighting games to be a compelling but ultimately tragic genre when it comes to game design and game competition. But I love them anyway. Adios, everyone. So thank you to the $5 patrons, 100-100, Accepting Panda, Admiral Coconut, Anhold, Alexander Pfeiffer, Dingo, Anthony A, Arcade Hell, Arrow Viper, Beam Pit, Bo, Ben, Beetle Dames, Bog Hog, Brian Shiver, Chase Palumbo, Chattel Maltese, Chris Yusufovich, Chronic Burnout 3, Clara Cliff, Climey Coyote, Coast, Color Boy, Cook Sand 666, Cook Some Soup, Cory Mark, Des Audio, Danchi, Darren Griffin, Dave Hansen, David Crespo, Delta Tango 6, Disco Star Slayer, DJ420 Praise It, Fanticide, FCK, Frames Per Human, Francisco, Full Set, Retro Shmupper, How Su, Jake Ryan, J Lab, JBRPG, John Kelly, Game Boy Guru, K, K2, Khalil Reedy, Contain, Craze the Boys, K Horse, Low Casting, Malaise, Matt O'Leary, Maz, Megadeth 859, Minang, Michaelin, Michael McCord, Michelle Y, Queen Charlene, Nathaniel Davis, Neon Dagger Games, Oakla Googles, Philip Mason, Rattlecat, Raul, Real Skeen, Riff Mason, Rolf015, Scanline City, Seesaw FW, Shmup Junkie, Zero Pong, Steve Fiction, Story and Soil, Street Magic, Super Funk, SW1335, Tamzarian, Kugero Mucho, The Boot Rex, The Dirty Screech, The N1, The Old Benstaff, TRM, Sugumo, 2IU, Twilight EX, Unicoi Roots, Big Viper, Wabby Legs, X20 Spec, Utakaya, Zachary Patton.